If the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. Enjoy your freedom, walk in the newness of life. As the scriptures tell us, we are new creations. We are not reformed of our old nature because he had to get our old nature out and put his nature into us so that he could pour out his Holy Spirit into our lives and bring us out of the old and bring us into this new life. It's impossible for us to live the new life without the new nature. So I always keep saying as people believe that we have two natures in us. I have the nature of Christ, I have the nature of Adam. Either you are in Adam still, or you are in Christ now. And if you are truly born again, if you know that you have accepted Jesus, Lord of your life, and you have believed that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you are a new creation. You have repented of all forms of other worship. You have come to the place where you believe that you are a son of God. You have the spirit of Christ in you. You are no longer the old self, you are a new creation. How can you have two natures? It's abnormal. It's abnormal. Many Christians still believe that they have two natures. I have the nature of Christ, I have the nature of Adam. You cannot have two natures. Well, you're born again from within you, you got, you got the nature of Christ in you. It's your mind that you have to deal with so that your body can come in line. It's your mind that you have to deal with so that your body can like, line up according to the scriptures and live the new man. The new man needs new information. So information goes to your mind. Your mind is important. As we discussed even last time, your mind is very important. Jesus, I mean, God said, that without your mind, I would do nothing in your life. Because he doesn't do anything out of our will. He will not. Maybe there can be some sovereign acts that can take, take place around you, but when it comes to a pers person, he, he will never do anything without your will, without your mind. That's why you've got to renew your mind, your change. You've got to change your way. Maybe we could read that scripture again in Philemon, uh, verse 14. In Philemon, verse 14, where it says, without your mind, I will not do anything. And that was a very strong scripture that the Lord spoke to me years ago, and I repented of my way of thinking. Without your mind... Would I do nothing that your benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly? Your benefit should be all, always not because there is a necessity, but willingly. It, he has to use your will. You are not a robot. You are not a robot. Now Satan used us in the past. And uh, through his spirits that he was able to cause corruption in our lives and uh, forced us to live any old way we, he wanted to. But now you are redeemed from the curse of being a slave of the devil and you have become a son. You have become a son now. And there can be times that the father will correct his son because he is our father and uh, we, we, ought, we need to receive correction at times through his word, through his spirit. But we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. He, without your mind, he would do nothing. People are waiting and God would do something in their life. Even speaking in tongues, they are waiting for God to turn their tongues so that they would speak. No, you have to use your tongue. The Holy Ghost comes upon you and you start speaking with an unknown language. Now years back, where before I received uh, the speaking of tongues, the gift of speaking in tongues, it's a gift that God gives us. 
there, and I thought probably God has to come and stir up my tongue. But it never happened until I understood when the brethren who were praying for me and they said, you got to open your mouth and pray in tongues. You got to open your mouth and pray in tongues. So it is, it is a matter of our will. Our mind has to be renewed, changed, so that we would be in line with the scriptures and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So without your mind, I would do nothing your benefit should be not as it was a necessity, but willingly. I want to do something for the kingdom of God willingly. It's my will. I'm doing it by my own will. I'm doing it. And God will bless what you do towards the kingdom. Your prayer, your encouraging words, your being present amongst the people, amongst the believers, your giving. There's a lot of things that we can give to the Lord. I mean, he has... He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. That, but still, although he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, he is not going to use, he is not going to do it. But we got to do it. We got to, we got to move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We got to start speaking words of wisdom out of our mouth. We got to meditate and, and, and put the words of life into us. Your words matter a lot. What you speak matters a lot. How it could uh, impact life, another life. So, you don't, you don't have two natures in you. You've got the nature of Christ in you. You've got the nature of Christ in you. And now you've got to change your way of thinking. Not by reading the newspapers or by giving your time to the media the whole time. But that's also renewing, that also renewing your mind. But then that's going to keep you bound. But you've got to renew according to the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 Onwards, it talks about when we were not in Christ, how Satan used us. You has he quickened or given life who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were breaking the law and we were in sin. And the next verse says, Wherein in past you walked according to the course of the world, According to the prince of the power of the air, according to the prince of the power of the air. Who, are the, who is the prince of the power of the air? Satan and his cohorts and all his demon spirits that are trying to lead you and mislead you and forcefully get things done through you. According to the prince of the power of the air, you were, you were doing things according to the prince of the power of the air because he gate crashes into everybody's life and he, he doesn't need your will. He just wants to get you out of your will so that you would do things crazily. You would do things with no uh, restraint at all. He forces you. He gets, you. he gets things done through you. And you begin to wonder later, oh, why did I do this? Why did I speak? This? Why, did I, why did I hit this person? I should have never abused the person. I, according to the course of the prince of the power, according to the prince of the power of the air, the, the spirit that now it all is it's now working, in the children of disobedience. And the children of disobedience are the people in the world. That spirit is working in them. But then if you're also disobedient to the Lord, you also can walk in harmony with the world, out of the will of God, out of the purpose of God. You might say, I'm not, a, I'm not a child who is disobedient, but that's true. But if, if I'm going to join the clan with the world, I'm going to go with the world and I'm going to take advice from the world and walk with the world and give in to the crazy ideas of the world, then I can also get along with the devil and then do things. Verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation or our behavior in Time pass in the lusts of the flesh. We had those lusts of the flesh. I mean, whatever our, our flesh was craving for, we went for it. Whether good or bad was later. But now we don't do that. Since we are renewing our mind on a continual basis, our mind has been renewed. We don't give in to the lust of the flesh. We are yielded to 
the renewed mind you think a lot when you get into something when you want to do something you don't want to get into things unnecessarily because you don't give into the lust of the flesh the craving desires of the flesh or the emotions so fulfilling the desire of the flesh and the mind that was in the past and were by nature children of wrath even as others that's where we were that's our place where we were but now the next verse is but god who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us it was it, it is a love story that started off it was the love of truth that we received it was it was a love story in 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 our coming into a relationship with god and uh, to oppose that in the book of thessalonians second thessalonians it says that god will permit some things to happen to the people who refuse in uh, second uh, thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 10 with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth as i told you the gospel is a is, is a love story that begins god in his love and in his mercy shares the gospel with us gives us the good news so because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved salvation comes by the love of the truth it's all the love i mean god doesn't come over you and say repent now or else you die you know he said i love you i gave my only begotten son to die on the cross so that through him you might be saved God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that through him you might be saved God didn't send his son to condemn the world but to but through him that we might be saved so the love of truth it all with God it all began that there, there have been times that people have I mean I think lots of us have accepted the Lord when we were really broken when we have tried everything by our own strength and we have failed miserably failed and in that in that position that we were in and we say oh god if you're alive lord speak to me do something about my situation and god revealed himself the love of truth came to you and you said yes lord i want to receive you as my lord and savior come into my life come into my life make me this person that you're talking about oh god and uh, that's how people just give in to the they refuse the love of god by which by whom they can be saved and for this cause was 11 for this cause god shall send them strong delusion god shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that's the reason that people are believing the lie god says okay if you don't want to receive the love of the truth then i'll just let you have what you want to and you believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe the lie who believe not the truth that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness they had pleasure in unrighteousness thank god we don't have no more pleasure in unrighteousness we want to do the right thing we want to love people we want to walk in the truth we want to walk in the newness of life so going back to ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 3 god who is rich in love or verse 4 god who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us he loved us he didn't hate us he loved us he didn't come all over us and find fault with us that's not the way the gospel is preached 
that's not the way the gospel is preached. Like people who say, I mean, I remember long years back, I heard this uh, sinners in the hand of an angry God. I think we should turn that around and say sinners in the hand of a loving God. Sinners in the hand of a loving God. Because if you're in the heart, if you're in the, if you're in the, if you're in the hand of the angry God, means it's always possible that you can be kicked into hell. But he wants to receive you into heaven. He wants to give you an inheritance. That's what, that's what God loves. All his wrath was poured on Jesus. God was mad with Jesus. He poured all his wrath on Jesus on the cross. And that's why Jesus cried out and said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken? I mean, he never had, he never prayed a prayer like that. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You let me take this whole thing alone. Yeah, God didn't die on the cross. The Son of Man died on the cross. The Holy Ghost left him. God left him. He died as a 100% man. He died as a 100% man. He was preserved until he gave his life on the cross. God was with him. And then we find, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? He never experienced that. And if you see the life of Jesus, he always talks about his father. He always talks about his father. But all, all of a sudden, he's turning around and saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So that you don't have to cry that cry anymore in your life. You can say, my father, I thank you that you never leave me nor forsake me. He took the curse upon himself so that we might receive the blessing. He's, he's God, but he's our heavenly father. We don't pray and say, oh God, please Lord, do something, Lord. You know? We say, heavenly father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus said, pray in my name. When you pray to the father, pray in my name. John chapter 16 and verse 23. He said, hitherto have you not prayed and asked. Let's put the scripture up. John 3.23 In that day you shall ask me nothing. I mean people, some of these people, they, they use the name of Jesus in vain. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. He said, no, you don't have to cry out. You just simply have to believe. Pray according to the scriptures. He said, verily, verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. He will give it to you. Whatsoever you ask the Father. Let's be very scriptural. When you go to the Father and say, Oh, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. That's the way we are supposed to pray. Because Jesus is the mediator. He's the one who made a covenant between God and man. Christ Jesus. He made the covenant with us. So that we no longer are supposed to be orphans. But we are fathers. We are children of God. We are children of God. Whosoever... Whoever, uh, whatsoever you are, you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Verse 24, he says, Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Well, let's be very scriptural. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Seek and you shall find. To all who ask shall receive. To all who seek, they will find. To all who knock, the door shall be opened unto them. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive. 
that your joy may be full. If your joy is halfway through, get your prayers answered and get it full. Ask, and you shall receive. Ask. You receive in Jesus' name. You pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and receive the promises of God, enjoying the goodness of God all the days of your life. I mean, when we come to him, we got to be careful for nothing. The Bible says in Philippians 4 and verse 6, be careful for nothing or make sure that you're praying in faith. Be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious when you pray. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication or being very specific, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Let your request be made known unto God and believe that you receive them when you pray. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Whatsoever things you desire, Mark 11, verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, the Bible says the desire of the righteous is good only. You will only desire the good things. So if you're the righteous man, you, you pray in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe. That's the most important factor. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So having them comes after you believe that you have received them. You pray, believe, and receive. You pray, and when you pray, believe that you receive them. Believe that you have them now, right I'm now. When I, the moment I prayed, I believed that I received it. And you shall have them. So you shall have them comes after you believe. But most of the time it's the opposite. Where I shall have them and then I would believe. That's put in the cart before the horse. You're doing things in the reverse. I need, to put, I need to put God first and say, God, I believe. You know, faith is so easy to be understood if we believe that he never lies. He never lies. In the book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 2, we'll read from verse 1 onwards. Chapter, uh, Titus, chapter 1 and verse 1 onwards, it says... Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ and some of the false prophets would never want to call them servants of God. They, they say, we are, we are way beyond servants, you know. But then Paul, he was an apostle of Jesus Christ appointed by the Lord himself was willing to call himself a servant of God. And when you, there's so much of pride in some of the ministers who are ministering today, don't call me a servant of God, call me a prophet of God, call me some apostle of God, or call me a reverend, or call me a bishop, or whatever. Paul, an apostle of God, because he didn't want to disconnect himself from the source of all life. You have to be connected to the source of life for you to live rightly and be a blessing to others. An apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. That's an important factor of godliness, receiving the truth with godliness, acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. The next verse, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, who God cannot lie, promised before the world began. And one of the characteristics of God is a God who cannot lie. He doesn't lie. If he said, ask, you better ask and believe before you see the end results. 
believe that you receive them and then you shall have them he cannot lie he cannot lie ask and believe so that you would have start believing for some small thing instead of going in for a, i mean if you don't have faith for some great thing start with small things start with small things start believing go step by step the bible says in the book of psalm 34 somewhere down there it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord and though he fall he shall rise again put that switch up a steps of a good man psalm 37 Psalm 37 you got it okay let me get it I'm talking about the god who cannot lie thank god he's a good god 23 the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord and he delighteth in his way though he fall he shall not be utterly cast down You know, read the Psalms; they are very nice. And there are times that you may get stuck. You will, you need to have it in the revelation of the New Testament, and then you will find the book of Psalms so interesting. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord shall uphold him with his right hand. Thank God, he shall uphold us with his right hand. So. be a believer born again child of god believing god you know our believing faculty has become a little bit weak sometimes we start believing one thing for a while and then start believing something else for a for a season be a consistent believer choose to be a believer because i don't have two natures in me i have the nature of christ in me my old nature is gone the song that we sang is talking about old things that passed away all things have become new in my life all things have become new no you know man in the flesh go with me to second corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 15 onwards we we'll read from 15 on that he died for all second corinthians 5:15 that he died for all that they which live should not live henceforth unto themselves but unto him who died for them and rose again live for christ live for the one who died for you and who rose again he didn't die and never alive again he died and he rose again i'm living for the one who rose again i'm walking with him and talking with him i've been led by him i've been guided by him and the next verse 16 says 16 wherefore henceforth we know no man after the flesh no make your flesh an important person no make yourself so important in the flesh because you're a spiritual being now although you have a flesh you don't make decisions according to your flesh we used to make our decisions according to the flesh when we were in adam but now we are no longer in adam who was a fallen person we are no longer i mean as satan fell he didn't have to latch on to anything he hung on to adam satan was kicked out of heaven and one third of the angels followed him thinking that they get a better place than heaven how would you think of getting out of heaven and finding a better place and he was kicked out and he came to this neutral ground called the garden of eden and he thought he looked at adam and he was so jealous looking at adam he, he probably would have thought my how come he has made man a little lower than god and not in the not in the form of an angel but according to according to uh, his likeness and his image and satan was so mad god kicked me out i'm going to get his image 
because man was made not as an angel i mean if somebody told you that you're like an angel you look at them and say oh, i'm a son of god who is in a higher class i mean we're not supposed to be calling ourselves angels i mean angels were never are not even supposed to be worshiped the great revelation that john had in revelations 19 and verse after all the revelation that he had in 19 and verse number 10 all of a sudden john worshiped the angel and fell at his feet to worship him and he said see thou do it not i'm a fellow servant angels are to serve the sons of god they hearken to the voice of god so when you speak the word of god they are at work i'm i'm thy fellow servant and thy and 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 your brethren that have the testimony of jesus if you are born again you have the testimony of jesus and the and the angel declares and say i'm only a fellow servant i'm only a fellow servant they they know where in the bible where god calls angels as sons of god but you are called the son you are called the son psalm 103 and verse number 20 Psalm 103 and verse number 20 talks about how angels hearken to the voice of God. They hear what the spirit says. They hear what the word they'll only do what the word says. Satan he did something opposing to the angel and and they all all the angels learned the bitter lesson. He was kicked out of heaven. And uh, they decided we're going to follow the Lord. Bless the Lord you his angels that excel in strength they can be mighty they can be strong that do his commandments hearken unto the voice of his word angels are not supposed to be hearing anybody else but only to hear what the what the lord says the word of god angels are supposed to only they're supposed to hear the voice of god and when you speak the word of god angels are at work angels are at work thank god you have ministering spirits who are working for you believe god they work for you they are ministering spirits they are fiery angels i mean they are strong compared to the flesh and blood but they wouldn't touch a born again child of god they have no right they only do at the command of his voice most of the time when people saw an angel of god they always got scared and the angel had to say fear not fear not because they are so fierce and they are so strong they they belong to a different class they are very strong and they are mighty but they only hearken to the voice of the word so when you speak god's word angels obey you speak god's word he obeys you in uh, hebrews chapter 1 it says in the book of hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 4 and 5 hebrews being made so much better than the angels as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they so jesus is far above the angels and god made you in the image of jesus and in his likeness was 5 for unto which of the angels said he at any time thou art my son never there is no time that god has all had at any time said you're my son 
This day have I begotten thee, and again I will be unto him a father, and he shall. It's talking about Jesus. It's talking about Jesus. And verse number 14, or we'll read from verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand. But he said to Jesus, God said to Jesus, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. But unto which of the angels did he say at any time, sit on my right hand? No, they were not supposed to be seated with him. But do you know something? God has elevated you and me to be seated together with him in heavenly places. God has elevated us to be seated together with him in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. He hath raised us up together. When you accepted Jesus Christ and went into the waters of baptism, you were raised up together with Jesus and had made and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ. You have your salvation has brought you into Christ, and you have got the nature of Christ in you now. You don't have the Adamic nature. Adam, Adamic nature is a fallen nature. When the devil fell, he said, I'm going to get this, I'm going to come to this beautiful. Adam, a strong character. I'm going to hoodwink him, deceive him, and get all the power into my hand. And that's what he did through Eve. Deceived Eve. But Adam opened wide his eyes and he gave in to the devil. So the biggest problem is Adam, not Eve. He should have taken his place and said, Eve, you're not supposed to touch of the forbidden tree, or at least you're not supposed to eat of the forbidden tree. Get rid of that junk out. But he didn't do that. Eyes wide open, he swallowed the pill. And the human race fell. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. He immediately, he immediately said, no, Satan will be destroyed on the cross and he'll restore restore man back to him and that's what he did so we don't have two natures we have one nature we are we are in Christ Jesus you don't have a fallen nature and you don't have a victorious nature you only have a victorious nature in Christ Jesus you are in Christ Jesus. If you go to the scripture, you, the book of Colossians and the book of uh, Ephesians, you would always find in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ Jesus. You don't have two natures in you. You are a, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things have become new in your life. Ephesians chapter, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 5 and verse 16. Henceforth know no man, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, even, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, before his crucifixion and resurrection, yet now henceforth know we him no more in the flesh. We don't know him, in the, he's no longer in the flesh, he's in the spirit. He rose again. He's resurrected. So people who are seeing all these visions that they're talking about, oh, Jesus came to me, Jesus. If he wants to, he can come as a man if he wants to, but usually you, you will see him in his voice, his word. He can't trust people with visions. It's impossible because when you do that, people are so weak in their, in their way of looking if Jesus keeps up appearing to people, they would always have, they would, they would make their own form. God of Jesus appeared to me and I saw him like this. Yeah, he is. He's everything. I mean, if you see the book of Revelation, John, he appeared to John and John fell flat on the ground. He said, we knew, we knew Jesus and he was among the 12 disciples. We knew him as a man. We touched him. We tested him. We saw him. 
But now when I see the real Jesus, he fell flat on his ground. Flat on the ground, he said, my, I, I didn't know my, your Jesus. I didn't know. I mean, I like that scripture. We have read this before, but let's go for it. Revelations chapter 1. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 19, if I'm not mistaken. Eighteen. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We can see verse thirteen. Fourteen. His head and his hairs were white as wool and white as snow, and his eyes were as flaming fire. Now this was not the Jesus they saw. They walked with. He's, and his feet like unto fine brass. If they burn, as if they burnt, you know, they were burnt in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Verse 16. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength that's the Jesus and when he saw him and when I he said when I saw him I fell uh, I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his hand, right hand upon me, saying, fear not, I am the first and I am the last. He said, I have conquered. I'm the first and I'm the last. None of us need to fear Jesus. If you're born again, you don't have to fear him. You, may have, you need to have the fear of the Lord, but you don't have to fear that fear that we had in the past. Because he's love. I'm, I'm he that liveth, verse 18. I'm he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And we have and had the keys of hell and death. He's in charge now because he paid the price. He, he didn't freely get it from the devil. He didn't get the keys from the devil Easily, he had to pay the price. That was the blood of Jesus Christ. He now says, I have the keys of hell and death. I can choose who goes to hell. That's what he says. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his love. Thank God for his goodness. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14 says, about the angels who are not supposed to be worshipped for any reason and even if you have an angel of God appear to you and if he accepts worship which means it's a false it's an evil spirit if he says bow down to me I'm an angel you better know that it's an evil spirit and are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. Every one of us are going to be saved. Angels are ministering spirits. They're ministering to us. They're, I mean, that's the reason you've got to speak God's word so that they would hearken unto God's word. If you speak anything out of God's word, their hands are tied. They only listen to God's word. And the only, only people who could speak God's word are the ones who are born again. Who are born again. If you're a born again child of God, you have the right to take his words and speak out of your mouth. He wants to make your mouth as the mouth of God. He wants you to speak God's word. Because you have the spirit of Christ in you. 
That's the reason you've got to separate yourself from that which is vile, from the precious. In Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 19 says, Therefore, thus said the Lord, if you return, then I will bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me, and God says this, and if you take away the precious from the vile, God's word is precious, and thou shalt be as my mouth, God says. You've got to stop speaking things that are contrary to God's word. If you take the precious from the vile, thou shalt be my mouth. God doesn't speak two things. He doesn't, he doesn't speak the evil and he doesn't speak the good. It's in Lamentations, the book of Lamentations, the book of Lamentations after Jeremiah, it says out of the mouth of God, Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 38. Out of the most, out of the mouth of the most high proceedeth not evil and good. God doesn't have two, two ways of speaking. If he said it, that's how it's going to be, and his words are good, can be trusted. He's a good God. So Jeremiah. 15 and verse 19 says, you got to separate the precious from the vile, and thou shalt be my mouth. Then let them return unto thee, but thou shalt not return unto them. So when you speak words out of your mouth, you begin to see things happening. Things are going to turn right in your life as you speak God's word. You're speaking Words are, that's, those are the words that the angels are waiting to hear. Speak God's word. When you pray, pray scripturally in Jesus' name to the Father. Instead of just saying, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, what am I going to do, Jesus? No, no. Speak, pray scripturally. When you cast out demons, you don't tell the Father, Lord, can I cast out demons? No, you cast out demons. In Jesus name if you don't cast out demons they're gonna cast you out that's the reason many many of us feel so worn out because we have been put pressure by the enemy and we have not taken our weapon of our warfare and spoken against the devil as a new creation in Christ Jesus we are supposed to speak against evil spirits with no fear in our hearts I wonder if there is a counter-attack I wonder if he turns back to me. No, he's not going to. He has no way. If you stand your ground, you stand your ground and he will obey you. Satan has no way out. In Mark 16 and verse 17, Mark 16 and verse 17 says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils or demons. Get used to casting out demons. When you feel oppressed, take authority over the spirit of oppression and say, Satan, you're a liar, you're a cheat. I command you, go. In my name, you shall cast out demons. Cast out demons. It's important. Sleepless nights. Worn out. And in whatever you feel, you name it and cast that devil out. If you have adulterous pictures coming into your, in your dreams and you have things coming over you and you have this urge to get into lawlessness, take authority over the spirit of adultery and say, you wicked spirit of adultery, I take authority over you and I command you, Satan, take your hands out and get out of me. Instead of saying, I don't know, I mean, we are living in this world. After all, no, no, you're not. You're living in this world, but you're, you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. When Satan comes over you and comes with some kind of a dirty idea, you say, I take authority over that spirit and I bind and I cast it out. In some fearful thought comes over you. You're going to die. 
you're going to die i mean that's how satan comes you say you take your spirit of death out of me i take authority of the spirit of death i bind you and i cast you out in jesus name jesus said cast demons out name them cast them out what do you feel at that time you feel like committing suicide take authority over the spirit of suicide and say you devil you spirit of suicide i take authority over you and take your junk and get out people are praying over you and you feel miserable at times and you feel low most of the time low than to be in in high places you take authority over those spirits and say i take authority over prayers of witchcraft that are made against me and i cast them out that's the authority that god has given you and me sickness i bind you in jesus name take your hands out and get out go in jesus name because many times when people were sick jesus had to cast out the demons there can be other other reasons for you to be weak or sick you can take care of all that concerning your body but then there are evil spirits who have no mercy at all you feel tired and weary all the time so i never feel like they because evil spirits want to wear you out isaiah 54 and verse 17 says no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper i doesn't stop there every tongue that rises up against you in judgment you shall condemn you have to use words out of your mouth and say no devil it shall not be so many of the things satan puts into our minds and we have accepted it and we have said i feel i feel i'm going down the tubes i feel i'm going down i don't know whether i'm going to lose this job of mine i'm afraid but you got to say no i'm not afraid I'm not afraid. I take authority. Whatever you fear is going to come upon your life. Instead God has given us the authority over fear. That's the faith that you have in Christ Jesus and say fear I address you now in Jesus name take your hands out and go. Confusion I take authority over you. Take your hands and go. Sickness get out of my body. like this preacher said sometimes the devil is so deaf that you got to speak a little loud but even a soft tongue can handle it no problem i mean that's okay a soft tongue can break hard bones the bible says in proverbs but you got to speak the word you got to speak you got to condemn what he brings against you in judgment you are going to condemn and this is the heritage of the servants of the lord as much as we are sons of god we are we are in the service of the lord jesus christ and we are the servants of god and this is the heritage and their righteousness is of me god says your righteousness is not your good works it's of me so you are bold as a lion the bible says righteous are bold as a lion So if you are bold you're going to speak against demon spirits. Proverbs 28:1 The wicked flee when no man pursues. The wicked are always afraid when I mean they're guilty of themselves but you're not wicked. You're the righteous. You're going to stand against the forces of darkness and say no devil you have no right. You may stand right before me but I'm not afraid of you. The Bible says in Nehum chapter 2 and verse 1 the destroyer can stand right before your face he that dasheth in pieces is come up before your face keep your munitions watch the way make thy loins strong fortify thyself fortify power mightily you are a strong character He's come right before you, your face, and he says, "I'm going to dash you to pieces." You say, "Let's let's see how it works." There is no fight here. The fight was won two thousand years ago. I'm standing on my victory ground, and I'm speaking to you. Take your filthy junk and get out of my life. Take your filthy hands out of me. 
I'm not going to bow down to you. No chance. No way, devil. You have no way into my life. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Satan wants you to just, you know, bow down. And many Christians have bowed down. They just bow down and let the devil run over their life. He says, I mean, he says, the devil says, I want you to become a plain ground for me so that I can walk over you. In Psalm 51 and the last verse, Psalm 51 and the last verse in Isaiah, Isaiah. <clears throat> but I will put into, into the hand of them that afflict thee which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may walk over you. Satan says, I want a plain ground to walk over you. And are you going to believe that lie? Or are you going to say, no devil, I'm not going to bow down and let you control my life. I take authority over you. I mean, you don't have to be so depressed. You don't have to be so oppressed by demons. You've got to stand your ground and say, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm not, I'm not in the, I'm, I don't belong to the Adamic fallen race, but I belong to Christ. I got a new nature. Bow down that we may walk over you. Demon spirit says, bow down, we may walk over you. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as a street to let them uh, and, to, and them that walk went over you. I mean, there are times that you feel so full of nothing. You feel like giving up, but you've got to say, no, I rise up in Jesus' name. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4 and verse number 1, it says, the, so I returned. This was his way of looking at things. When Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, a man of wisdom, he was a real man of wisdom because Jesus commended about his wisdom. He said even the queen of Sheba came to see the beauty and the creation and, and the kind of wisdom that proceeded out of uh, Solomon's mouth. And even in his back sitting stage, there was still, he was a gifted man. He had wisdom. So I returned and I considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold, the tears of such that were oppressed, they had no comforter. And on the side of the, of the one, uh, on the side of their oppress, oppressor, there was power. But they had no comforter. What do I do? This is what I see. On the side of the oppressor, there was power. But they had no comforter. The ones who were oppressed had no comforter. But the good news is Jesus is our comforter. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. In the book of uh, 1 John, I'm sorry, John chapter 14 and verse 15, I believe. It should be 15. I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Now, another comforter, that word simply means the same one that I'm operating by. That he may abide with you forever. You have a comforter in you. So the oppressor comes against you to oppress you. The comforter in you sustains you. And you rise up and say, devil, you're a liar. He said, I'll never leave you. The comforter will never leave you. He's going to be with you forever. That's New Testament. That's a born again child of God. He's your comforter. He said, I'll never leave you as often as I'm going to be with you. I'm your comforter. I'm your comforter. Take courage in the God that you love and you serve and you, you believe in. That he's your comforter. He is your comforter. He is your comforter. Thank God he is my comforter. I'm not somebody who is, 
who is just given to the hands of the devil i'm going to close with this scripture in romans chapter 6 and verse number 4 therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead so by the glory of the father even so we also should walk in the newness of life as much as Jesus died for us and he rose again we were we were we died with we died with Jesus and we are resurrected with Jesus even so we should walk in the newness of life in the newness of life in the newness of life verse number 5 if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we died our old nature died in all when your old nature died you died i mean you are not resurrected but if you are resurrected you are resurrected as a new creation in christ jesus your old nature died we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection who is jesus now he is victorious so are you we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection and the same spirit that raised jesus from the dead now dwells in you to give life to your dying body knowing this verse number 6 knowing this if you read romans 6 7 and 8 you'll get quite a lot of meat there concerning the new creation But when you come to 6 you might you might get stuck in one of the scriptures where it says i want to do the right and i do the wrong and uh, i'm between two and all kind you get confused the best talking about the old nature how your old nature become the new person now you take the you are accountable concerning the new person i sin i acknowledge i made a mistake you don't say oh i want to do the right thing but i did the wrong thing paul is talking about the old nature there knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that the body of sin might be destroyed henceforth we should not serve sin you're not a slave to sin anymore your body of your body of sin is destroyed your body of sin your body may want to do certain things but the new said you're destroyed you're dead look at your body and say body you're dead but i'm alive in the spirit have that knowledge in you so that you will speak to your body and bring your body in subjection to your spirit through knowledge you do it by knowledge but if the devil comes and tempts you and then you feel oh yeah i just need to give in this time probably i mean i'm too weak in faith no even if you're weak in faith it doesn't matter you rise up lord when i'm weak you said that i'm strong you rise up it's none of his business because of your weakness Paul said it like this in Roman in in first in uh, second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 8 for this thing well he said he was was we'll go to verse 7 verse 7 yeah okay verse 7 lest i should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation that was given that was given unto me a thorn in the flesh that's not sickness that's not blindness people have called that sickness paul had a sickness called the thorn in the flesh or he was blind that's why he was writing in big letters and they have lots of interpretation for that but the bible very clearly interprets the scripture there itself the thorn in the flesh is the messenger of satan to buffet me lest i should be exalted above measure and verse 8 because he was wherever he went he was persecuted by the jews wherever he went and spoke about the new creations persecution came so he verse number 8 he says lord i'm seeking you he has sought the lord thrice verse 8 verse 
<clears throat> For this thing concerning all this, the thorn in the flesh, I besought the Lord thrice, oh Lord, please take this away. Please take. And he answered the same question. He said, it, it might depart from me. But it didn't depart from him. Was nine. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. I love that. In all your oppressions and whenever, we, I mean all the afflictions that you feel, that you are faced with the insults and the persecutions that you're going through because of the name of Christ. You can always say, his grace is sufficient for me to overcome. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. So when you're weak, don't be upset about it. God says, my strength is mature to handle your weakness. My strength is mature to handle your weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Thank God for his grace. Let's pray. I can go all off afternoon. If it is new creation teachings, I can just keep on going because there is so much of life. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become new in your life. You're no longer the old and the new mixed together. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You have the comforter in you. Even in the time of afflictions, he comforts you and he enables you to overcome. Put on the whole armor of God, the Bible says. That you may stand against the wiles of the enemy, the, the cunning, systematic tricks of the enemy. That's what it says in Ephesians 6, 10 onwards. Put on the whole armor of God. Stand your ground. Know that you are the righteousness of God. Take up the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Take up the sword of the spirit, which is the offensive. The word of God in your tongue. You've got to have the word of God in your tongue to speak. And let the devil know that you know revelation. He's scared of revelation knowledge because the gates of hell shall not prevail against revelation knowledge. Stand your ground. Believe God and say, Lord, I thank you. You made me bold as a lion. Satan is not going to have his day over me, I am. Going to reign in life through Christ Jesus. For the abundance of grace that is given unto me. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am not in the mercy of the devil. I'm in, a mercy, I'm in the mercy of the life-giving love of God. I'm not under the mercy of the circumstances. I'm in the mercy of a rich God who loves me. Let's partake in the covenant meal. Thank you, Jesus.
depart from your eyes Keep them in the midst of your Lord Jesus. Let's make this declaration, believing this communion, the very fellowship that we have with Christ, which is a covenant meal. Let's say, Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you made a way for us to be saved through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the broken body, we thank you for the shed blood which we receive with thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus, for being good to us, bring, bringing health and joy into us. Every part of our being is being cleansed and washed by the blood of Jesus and by our broken body. The promise that we have is by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. I thank you, Jesus, for healing my body, for restoring my soul. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Let's partake together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your cleansing blood. Thank you for your cleansing blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Every part of our body that is broken is being healed. Thank you, Jesus internal organs that are deteriorated. Lord, there is always a possibility. Always a possibility if we believe in you. Nothing is impossible with you. That you can place new organs into our bodies. So we intercede and we believe for these dear ones and those who are even viewing right now. 
and those who would view later that the spirit of the lord there is nothing impossible for the holy spirit to do in your life thank you jesus your internal organs are being replaced rejoice in the lord you don't have to die early god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life he didn't send his son to condemn the world but through him that we might be saved jesus bore stripes upon his body for your healing live healed you don't have to drag your way through life god says i'll satisfy you i'll satisfy you and show you my salvation and you shall have you shall live long because you love me and you know my name Psalm 91 is a beautiful psalm. Proclaim it to yourself. That's a love letter. From the I mean the entire book is Psalm 91. It's because you know me and I'm known of you. You shall have long life and be satisfied and I'll show you my salvation. Thank you Jesus for healing. Thank you Jesus for releasing us from mind storms. Because you're not the author of confusion, you're the author of peace. So let there be peace in the minds of the people. Peace in the minds of the people of God. Oh, we love you Jesus. We love you. Praise God. Let's honor him with our tithes and our offerings. Let's worship him and thank him for all the good that he does for us. Believe God.
Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for making us new creations in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away, all things have become new. And Father, we thank you that we don't have two natures, we just have one nature. We are so thankful to you, Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you, Father, for each and every one of these dear ones of Father who have honored you. And Lord, you look down from your holy habitation and Lord, you said in your word that you will give a hundredfold according to your word. You said, Lord, give and it shall be given unto you, Lord. You said, Lord, that the windows of heaven shall be opened unto them. Lord, you said in your word, according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus, that you would meet them, O oh Father. And Father, and these are seeds that are brought before you, and Lord, an increase comes from you, and the increase is hundredfold. Your word says so, O oh God. We believe, Father, that the windows of heavens are open for them. Wherever they go, they will stay under the open heavens to enjoy the goodness of God. Thank you for the finances that you have blessed them with. Thank you, Jesus, for the honor that, that you have given them, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, for the glory of God that rests upon them, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for every good thing that you have promised them and you are bringing to pass in their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and see you next Sunday. Also, we have our prayer every Tuesday at 9 and then at 6 p.m. So you're most welcome. Come at any time you want between 9 and uh, uh, actually 9 and 12 and then 6 and 8. So three hours in the morning and two hours in the, in the evening. You're most welcome. God bless you.